Hey everybody, it's Chris. I am here today to do some beachy vibes with you. I've got a bunch of Lazy Susan set out. I've also got some coasters set out here. Um, I want to get started because I mixed up just a little bit of some shimmer gold paint into the resin as well and might have got a little carried away. So it's getting a little goopy already. So I'm going to set this stuff to the side here and get started. I'm working on wood rounds um, from Menards. In fact, I want to kind of do these all at the same time. So I'm going to set my resin off of all my Lazy Susans. I got three different sizes out. I did set my resin out in the sun to kind of get a little bit of heat into it so that it would um, stir up nicely, which it did work out really well. I love the consistency of it. Um, but I thought it would be kind of fun to mix a little bit of gold in there just to have a little bit of shimmer because you know I love my shimmer. Um, what I'm doing right now is just kind of laying out my sand where that's going to be on my Lazy Susans. Um, I did mix up three cups of resin. Usually I can get a large and a medium Lazy Susan out of two cups of resin. So I kind of mixed up three. I'm hoping it'll be enough. Just using my little popsicle stick here to kind of spread my sand out a little bit just so that I can kind of put that gold shimmer in there before she sets up. And just kind of trying to vision like where would the sand be? Where would the water be? Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I will tell you this time that I was very careful how I laid out my Lazy Susans and I made sure that the wood grain is kind of going with the grain of my colors, if you will. Um, I've done one before and I didn't pay attention to that and I was really sad because the grain was kind of against my lines of color and it didn't look so great. So didn't love how that one turned out. So I was very careful to make sure that I have these going the right way. I um, do have coasters set out here just in case um, <clears throat> just in case I have enough, I may try to, um, do some coasters as well, but I already know that this, this gold is already setting up on me. So I'm just going to try and get some of this on here so that it doesn't go to waste. I kind of knew when I put it in here, I didn't have a lot of resin in this cup and I kind of had an idea that I got a little heavy handed with my paint, but I was like, well, too late now. So I'm just kind of putting some lines across here. And like I said, I just want that shimmer in the sand part of it. I just kind of think that'll add a little something extra to it. And might as well just go ahead and get it on here and use it up a little bit. <clears throat> um, usually my sand is a little bit translucent. So it does seem to show the... Um, it will show the wood grain through it, which I think is just fine, um, especially if you do have the wood grain laying in the right way. I'm not sure if I mentioned, I buy these Lazy Susans. I have three different sizes that I can get at Menards, and I have to say they're actually quite nice quality. Um, in fact, as I was uh, getting them ready today for the video, I was like, gosh, these really are a nice quality of, of Lazy Susans. <clears throat> okay, so I've got a third one over here that you can't see, but let me go ahead and kind of get some of the sand here on the edges because eventually I want to start using my hand just to kind of blend the colors and move everything around. So kind of want to make sure I've got my brown going over the edge to cover because it's not so pretty if the sides aren't covered. Um, I did kind of hand pick these Lazy Susans to make sure that they were very nice quality. Um, some of the Lazy Susans I buy do have some knots in them which when I'm painting, I really don't care because by the time they get painted, it doesn't really show anyway. But I knew that for the beach ones, I really wanted it to look nice. So I did kind of hand pick to make sure that I had really nice ones. Um, these do have a few knots in them, as you can kind of see in that middle one. But that's up where I have some other color. So I guess my biggest thing was if it had a knot, it needed to be up where the blues of the ocean were not necessarily down here where the sand was. Since I did mix up so much resin, I kind of have to move fast and make sure that I'm getting everything covered. Um, this is the sky blue dispersion color. I don't really love this color by itself. So, so I did mix a little bit of the golden teal high flow paint into it, just to kind of give it more of that blue green color that I like. And I feel like it's going to go with the rest of the colors a little bit better and hopefully I mixed up enough because 
it's a custom color, so it's gonna be a problem if I don't have enough of it here. Again, making sure that I kind of go over the sides. Um, I'm sure that I have enough on here though. There's quite a bit of that. And then next is the aquamarine. This is a really beautiful color too. So I'm just gonna kind of put a band of this out. This is probably my favorite color in this whole color scheme of ocean. I just think it's such a beautiful color. So it tends to be a little bit bigger swatch than the other color. It's definitely a bigger swatch than the aquamar or the uh, sky blue one. All right. I do have just a little bit of clear on standby in case I need it, but hopefully we'll be okay once we start smearing things around. I think I got a little carried away over here with this first one. So I'm just gonna kind of scoop some of it off and put it over here on this guy. This is the one that you can't see, but I will do a shot of all of them so you can kind of see what they look like here before I get done. And then the final color is cobalt that goes across the top. And as I said, I'm just gonna kind of take my hand. I've got some paper towels over here. I did double glove for this because I knew that I was gonna to have to kind of get my hands into it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. Grab one of my paper towels. And you can see my aquamarine kind of got a little carried away here. Let's see if I can scoop up a little bit more of it. Cause she's kind of going a little crazy and getting into my other colors here. So I'll scoop a little bit off here because I did get too much of it. There we go. All right, so first I want to kind of move my sky blue around a bit and just kind of mix them up into the aquamarine, which really went nuts. So let's see if we can kind of get that up there a little bit more and wipe it off on the side and wipe my fingers off. I don't want that much aquamarine into my sky blue, so. A little bit is okay, but we don't want the whole thing to be aqua blue, so. And I'm just kind of making sure that my sides are done. I'm gonna move over here. The biggest thing is to try to keep your fingers out of all the other colors too. It's just such a cool effect, I love it. And then after the sky blue is dispersed and kind of mixed in, we'll move on up to the next color and continue on. So I'm just gonna kind of fast forward this and let you watch.
All right, the next thing I wanna do is to pop the bubbles and I'm using my big camping torch. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly pop the bubbles and then I do want to add a little bit of armor art um, to kind of start that foaming wave sensation. Um, so let me pop them and then we'll get onto that step. This is also a really good time to check to see um, for bubbles, or excuse me, for hairs. Even though I lint roll myself, I always seem to get hairs and things. And how I can tell is with the, um, after I pop the bubbles, sometimes I can kind of see like a little um, curvy line in the surface. And that usually is an indicator that I have a hair in there. So I've got my trusty little toothpick and I'll see if I can get that cleaned out. I try to be super careful and not have hair on my clothes. I always put a clean shirt on, and but when you have as many animals as we do, it's kind of tough to, it's a little tough to stay clean. So the armor art, my armor art's a little gooey. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, um, but I know from experience that I want it to be pretty thick in order for it to kind of give me the look that I want. Um, if there's not enough armor art in the resin, it won't really show up and it won't really foam. So I'm gonna grab my heat gun so that I can get this move in and get it kind of stirred in here real quick. Now I will tell you that since I put my um, resin out in the sun, and it warmed it. It was like super nice to work with, but it was not so great when it came to, um, or it was super nice to mix. It was not so great when it came to working with it though, because I feel like it kind of set up quickly. So I'm just gonna kind of go in here and add in some of my armor art. And I just kind of start off of the round and drizzle it across the surfaces. And I try to do like a couple of lines across. And this is just the first part of the armor art. Um, I will do another coat on top of, once this is dry, I'll do another clear coat. And then I'll add even more armor art into that. And I will say that I'm kind of digging the, um, the teal paint in that sky blue because I feel like it really added Kind of, I'm getting in some cells in there, which is kind of cool. Okay, guys, I'm gonna grab my heat gun and then see if I can get this to kind of move across here. And then we will let these sit until the next layer.
Okay, so you can see that I kind of moved back and forth over a couple of areas. And I was just kind of trying to break up these solid lines that I had um, because I don't want you to see just the lines of armor art. Um, I can see this little guy is kind of running away from me, so I probably need to get a stick under there so I don't lose all my beach. So I'm just gonna lift this up. I'll kind of shift it back up. And it kind of creep back the other way there. Sometimes if you get too much resin on your pieces, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, I knew that I had quite a bit of sand down there, so it kind of started flowing off, but that's all right. We'll let it kind of creep down the, the other way and it'll be just fine. So as I said, um, these will get another coat of clear over the top. I'll do yet another um, bit of armor art, so it'll kind of give it a lot more depth. And then um, they should be set. Usually a second coat does wonders for them. Um, I just love the, the lacy effects that the armor art gives though, and I think it's really quite beautiful. So very happy with these pieces. All right, guys, so um, these are gonna set aside. Hopefully, maybe later today, I can put a second coat on because the first coat doesn't have to be completely dry for me to be able to do that because I'm not really doing a lot um, to the surface of it. So as, as soon as it's set, then I can go back and, and do another coat of clear over the top and add some more armor. All right, guys, um, so we're gonna pause for now and come back for the rest of it. So I wanted to stop and kind of give you a few things um, that I was doing on these Lazy Susans um, yesterday when I poured these. I apologize because when I started, I had already mixed up my resin and I already had my colors in my resin and I'd gotten too much paint in the, um, in the sand color where I wanted to add some gold down here. So I kind of had to work quickly. So I didn't really have a lot of time to kind of tell you what I was doing or explain to you the products I was using. So I thought this would be a good opportunity before we add that second layer of resin to kind of um, explain to you what I was doing yesterday. So I um, always use counterculture DIY resin. I use the artist resin. Um, I like the artist resin because I can use it on everything. I use it on my Lazy Susans, I use it on my art, my coasters. Um, one of the great things about that resin, well, the main reason I started to use it was um, I was having a lot of allergic reactions to other resins that I had tried. So I found that the CC DIY resin was not like that. So that's why I changed to it. Um, the other thing that I really love about it is that it's 500 degrees heat safe 24 hours after you work with it. Um, there's another one called Stone Coat uh, Countertops. That one takes 30 days to be heat safe. So if you're you know kind of in a rush or like need a gift really quick, this one is a great one to use because you can give that gift, you know, just three days later after you have poured the resin and they're already heat safe. So the person can already use the coaster and not worry about their hot cup sticking to it. So I used four different colors of colorant. Um, these are also from CC DIY. Um, this is the sand. It's a dispersion color. Um, and that's what gave us obviously our sand down here. The paint that I mixed into the resin to get my gold metallic is this um, elegant finish and it is champagne gold. I buy this, as you can see, from Hobby Lobby. This is one of my favorite golds because it's just this really soft, shimmery gold. And I think it goes really nicely with a lot of things. Let me see if I can pick this up and show you um, how that looks in there. You can kind of see the brown and then you can also see the gold, there we go. If I get it just right in the window light, you can see it. Um, and as you know, I love shimmery things anyway, so that's why I wanted to add the gold uh, metallic to it. Um, this color is sky blue, but you can see that it's a little bit different. I added just a couple of drops of my golden teal high flow acrylic, and um, one of the cool things that happened, I've never done this before, but look at um, the really cool cells that I ended up getting here. Um, and that I'm pretty sure is because I put that golden teal in there. Um, the next color is aquamarine, which is one of my favorites. I, it's just this really beautiful deep turquoise. And then the top color is the cobalt. So these are all CC DIY colors and pigments. Um, the white was the Armor Art. I apologize, this one's really kind of a messy bottle. Um, it's had a lot of love. And that's how I created the white foamy um, 
waves, if you will, um, in the in the resin. So you can kind of see how that turned out. Now, these are not perfect, um, but they don't have to be because we're gonna put another coat of resin on them. Um, and I think I mentioned yesterday that I kind of love it when the wood shows through, which you can kind of see the wood grain. And this was another reason why I said, you know, if you're gonna do this, make sure that you have everything going in the right direction because I did do one and the wood grain was going the opposite way. Actually, I think it was diagonal and it kind of looked a little goofy. So I'm really happy that I stopped to think about that. Um, you can see the small one over here, and then this is the large one that I did yesterday, which was totally out of the camera shot, um, but this is the 18 inch that I was working on as well. So I did all three of these. I mixed up three cups of resin, and that did the 18, the 15, and the 12. I will say that I wish I would have had just a tiny bit more resin. Um, I did have some clear left over but I wish I would have mixed up just a little bit more because I really felt like I was kind of stretching when I got up into these two colors. Um, my sand and my soft sky were enough, but these other colors I really had to, to really stretch. And I ended up, um, actually, I did end up mixing up a little bit more just to put on this edge. And you can see that I kind of missed a little bit here with, um, with the colorant on that. So that'll probably go ahead and touch that up. I'll just grab a paintbrush and my cobalt and I'll go ahead and paint that that wood so that when we do put the extra coat of resin on today, that's not gonna show, because that, that looks a little tacky. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my resin. Um, I will mix up three cups of resin. I don't think it'll take as much this time because we're not going over bare wood, but I do have some things off to the side so that um, I should have some extra resin left so that I can go ahead and use that and it won't go to waste. Um, yesterday, I kind of touched on the fact that I was using um, this big propane torch. This is what I use to pop my bubbles. It's a burns matic TS-4000. If you get on the Counterculture website, they actually sell um, their version of this, which is a lot prettier, I have to say. Um, when this one gets too gummy and I have to have a new one, I'm probably gonna order from them. Um, and then I also use, um, I have a Wagner heat gun. This is my heat gun. It has settings on it for um, the speed or the fan. And then it also has settings on it for the heat. Uh, this is a, See if I can find a number on here for you. I don't have my glasses on. Um, but it's a Wagner heat gun. I would imagine if you go to the store, you can see exactly which one I have by looking at the ones that they have on display. But um, this is what I use when I want to move my armor art around. This will also pop bubbles too. Um, I just don't turn it on a high fan when I do that. I keep the fan sp speed on very low when I use it to pop bubbles, just because I don't want it to move my resin around a lot. Okay, so let me go mix up my resin and we will go ahead and add another coat on top of these. Hold tight. Okay, I've got my resin ready to go here. Uh, I just mixed it according to the directions on the bottle. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. I measure my parts out and then I stir those for three minutes to get it fully mixed until I don't have any striations in the mix. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some on here. Just doing a clear layer on here. So I'm just gonna use my hand. I have two layers of neoprene, or excuse me, nitrile gloves on. And the only thing that I did to prep the surface today was just to wipe it down to make sure that I didn't have any dust or residue on the Lazy Susans. So since this is just 24 hours later, I don't have to sand it. It's okay to add a second layer on here without sanding and going through that extra step. Now, as I said before, these will be heat safe in 24 hours but um, their directions state that after 72 hours, it's fully cured. And what that kind of means to me is that it won't scratch as easily. Right now, um, the surface is pretty soft, so it will definitely scratch if you were to rub something on it. Um, even as I wiped it off with a paper towel to make sure that everything was clean, I did get some tiny little scratches in it which isn't a big deal because I'm putting on my other layer of resin here. So I'm just making sure that everything is evenly coated so that I have something to lay that armor art on. And I'm gonna move on to my next one.
And as I said, I mixed up a little bit more than three and uh, three cups because I pretty much just finished up my bottles of resin that I had on, on hand. Um, but the second layer doesn't take as much as the first layer did just because we're putting a nice coat over it and we're not actually trying to cover. So it definitely will not take as much this time to do the resin on them. But you'll be amazed at the difference it makes by adding the second coat of resin and putting more waves on here. I did go ahead and touch up the um, cobalt areas where the wood was showing through, so that's all taken care of. And just kind of going around, making sure that I've covered all of my edges all the way to the bottoms of the wood. I think that's kind of the hardest thing to do is to make sure that you have all of the wood covered. Because you almost have to stand on your head to make sure that everything is pretty underneath. One of the reasons I put double layers of gloves on is it makes it so much easier to just slide one glove off and have a clean hand again. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly pop the bubbles in the resin using my big torch. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the Armor Art. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit of my clear resin in this one cup over here I have to the side. It doesn't take very much to do the waves, so you don't need to waste a lot of resin for it. Um, this is my little resin cup. So it's probably just maybe a third full. And I did mention yesterday as I was mixing my Armor Art that you want to use quite a bit of the Armor Art because it does seem to take quite a bit to make the waves actually work. And you can see that it kind of has a nice marshmallowy consistency, which is exactly what we want. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and drizzle this as I did yesterday from left to right across where my divisions of color are. I'm just going to go ahead and do all of my pieces here. And then use my heat gun to move it around.
okay. You can see how much more depth that added. Um, we definitely have a lot more interest in it now. Um, you can kind of play around with it. I kind of go back and forth and kind of move my um, pigment around a little bit more. Um, for example, in that middle one, I kind of feel like it's a little bit too high there. So I'll probably take a straw and kind of try to blow that back into where I want it. But um, I just think it's really a cool effect to add the foam and, and kind of get those waves going and that movement to the piece. So these guys will dry um, for 24 hours. And then I have a belt sander. Um, I'll go around with a toothpick and try to remove as much excess resin as I can off the bottoms. And then I have a belt sander and I'll take those to the belt sander and take all the drips off the bottom. And then I will add my Lazy Susan mechanism. So I find um, that my Lazy Susans are really a great seller at the craft shows and the art shows. And I have an art show coming up in a couple of weeks. So um, just thought I would share how I make my beach Lazy Susans with you. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you are interested in um, trying counterculture DIY resin or any of the colorants or the torch for that matter, you can use coupon code Chris, K-R-I-S-S, -S, and that'll give you $5 off of a $40 order. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer for you. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.